students, welcome to this week's Streaming IELTS Live classes. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest in the Carpathian Basin, the capital city of Hungary. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you've had a good start to your week, you're staying healthy and strong, and you're being productive and confident. All right. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Rashika. Hi, Maksud. Nice to see many of our uh, members in the class. Uh, and nice to see our regular students as well. Hi, Rimshaw. Hi, Flower Sun, Shaikh. I hope all are doing well. Uh, students, in this class, we are looking at speaking part one of the speaking interview, the speaking section in the exam. We will be doing some practice. I will give you some advice so that you can be nice and fluent and continuous in your speech and hopefully get those high band scores. Hi, Abhishek. Good to see many, many members. All right. Uh, while we wait for a few more students to join up, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there. And for general IELTS, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. I always put the URL up at the top of the screen here so that you can check those out at any time. On both of these websites, uh, we have loads and loads of great materials for you. This is our academic uh, web portal here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join. And this is our general IELTS uh, website here with the green background. Again, click that big red button. Uh, you can get access to over 100 hours of HD video lessons, six original practice exams, a fully interactive course, student speaking practice for the IELTS through video chat. Uh, hope everybody is using that. And you can even get help with your editing and writing. So lots and lots for you there. Uh, if you have any questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly uh, answer those for you. You can get our exam books from Amazon. We're British Council Test Center Partners. We're certified experts in test preparation and exams. All right, students, so uh, June 10th to 13th, classes every day. Uh, we will have two classes from tomorrow, uh, one for members, uh, one for everybody chat. Of course, everybody can watch those. Uh, and we will cover reading this week, listening, task one, and more speaking as well, all the way till Saturday. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's get into today's speaking. We've got lots of students in the class, which is great. Now, um, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak. Don't just type. Typing is great, but also speak and repeat. And I will give you feedback on your answers to questions. I will try to get different students at different times. All right, let's just warm up a little bit here with the first questions the examiner will say. So. Uh, get to your speaking exam early, students. Arrive about 30, 40 minutes early. Make sure to warm up speaking English. Do not, I repeat, do not walk into your speaking interview cold, meaning that you're using your own language. You walk into that room and then suddenly you're switching to English. Don't do that, even if you're an advanced user of the English language, okay? So make sure that you're using English for at least... 40 minutes before your speaking interview, okay? All right, uh, so let's just get into it. So you go into your speaking exam. You'll have a nice, quiet, private room with uh, an interviewer, person kind of like me, male, female, could be either or, okay? British accent, maybe Australian, could be American accent too. So uh, there's no guarantee that it will be a British accent, all right? And then they'll welcome you into the room. So they'll say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. Uh, what is your full name? So that'll be their first question. They'll want to introduce themselves and they'll want you to introduce yourself. So, uh, Jainil Gabani says, my full name is Jainil Gabani. Please call me Jainil. 
not for short, Jineal, because it's not for short, okay? Jineal is your full name. So Jineal, just please just call me Jineal, okay? So my full name is Jineal Gabani. Please just call me Jineal. It's my given name, all right? Again, repeat after me, students. Uh, Temer Khan says, my first name is Temer Khan. My second name is Kal Murzaev, but feel free to call me by my nickname, just Tim. That's great. Yeah, so Tim for Temer Khan. That's a nice nickname, okay? It's short, sweet, easy. Very good, Temer Khan. Gayarthi Pathuri says, my given name is Gayarthi and my surname is Pathuri. Please call me by my given name. Gayarthi. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So again, it's a good introduction. It's good to be detailed because it's not just a simple greet and meet, as we say, greet and meet, um, but it, you're actually giving them your name so that they can match it with your identification for the next question, right? So again, students, make sure to speak and repeat. Um, we're building fluency today, and uh, I'm going to give you more tips for that, but of course, the first step to good fluency is lots and lots of practice. Push yourself to speak quickly, to copy native speakers like myself, and to match that speed. Okay, I know it's challenging, but you want to match that speed. So, um, my full name is Kenneth uh, McAndrews. Uh, please just call me Ken for short, okay? So the only time you can use this expression, um, just call me Ken for short, is when it's a short part of the name, okay? So here you see Ken is the short part of Kenneth, but you can't say that, Jineal, if you're using your full name. So if it's Jineal there, you can't say for short there. So you just say, please call me Jineal, which is my given name. Okay, so careful. Make sure that you're very, very accurate in the beginning, because believe it or not, the IELTS examiner is assessing your skills from the very start, from the very first word that comes out of your mouth. It, it may seem to you like they're only measuring you uh, when they're asking you the uh, official questions from their sheet, but that's not true. They're already gauging and measuring your level uh, right from the beginning, right from what is your full name, okay? So make sure that you're really careful with that. All right, repeat after me. What is your full name? My full name is Kenneth McAndrews. Please just call me Ken for short. All right, Ken, uh, please have a seat. May I see your identification? It's the next question. May I see your identification? So give me a nice, smooth, full answer for this. I know some of you are saying this lots, but it's good. You want to practice this a lot, so you're sounding really natural for these first couple of questions. Bisser, hi. I saw that you were in the class early, Bisser. Good for you. You're being very studious, and that will pay off. Uh, Bisser Demerziev says, sure, this is my passport, which I use for registration. Uh, please take a look. Kind of finish that idea. Please take a look. Sure, here's my passport that I use for registration. Please have a look. Please have a look is a nice way to finish that idea. All right, Kyber says, yes, here you are. Uh, please have a look. Okay, not have good. Please have a look, Kyber. All right, careful, careful with your typing, students. Practice your typing accuracy. Sometimes I make typos as well, and nobody's perfect, but definitely pay careful attention. Nazir, thanks for joining the premium package. That's fantastic. Uh, Nazir, send me an email so I can hook you up with our premium course on our website and our full mobile app as well. Thanks, Nazir, for joining the premium package level. You're awesome. Okay, um, Hina Arshad says, yes, of course, here it is. I use this for registration. Uh, please have a look. Good. Shirojidin says, yeah, sure. Here's my ad identification, wh which I used for registration. Uh, please have a look. All of those are good. They're nice and fluent. Uh, sometimes students think like you should just go, yes, of course. 
and then hand the examiner because uh, I think some teachers out there and some schools are telling students that you don't need to say long sentences for these first questions. Yeah, I mean, don't keep talking for one minute when somebody asks for your name and your identification. That's just weird, okay? Uh, but don't just say, uh, I'm Kenneth Andrews. Yeah, sure. Don't do that either because that's not showing your fluency. This is not a casual chit chat, okay? You're not just there to get to know this person for them to get to know you. They're assessing your speaking. They need information. They need to hear fluency to assess you accurately. So yes, of course, it's not enough. All right. You want to show fluency every step of the way in the interview. So it is good to say, yes, of course, here's my passport that I used to register. Please take a look. Okay, you want to be expressive. You want to show fluency right from the start. Right from the start. Okay. All right. Again, Nazir, make sure to send me that email so I can hook you up with the full course with all the videos and exams and everything. Okay. I'll wait for that. All right. Um, cool. I saw your sure there, Nazir. That's good. All right. So uh, then the examiner will say... Uh, now I'll ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better for part one, uh, some more questions on a general topic, and I'm going to record this for marking purposes. And they do record the speaking. Oftentimes they will listen to a speaking interview a second time to make sure they have the right score, especially if they're a little bit unsure. Okay. Uh, so make sure to speak loud and clear so that if the examiners need to use the recording, then at least you're loud and clear in the recording. So hopefully they might give you like a better score. Okay. Is everybody clear on what I just said there? So you want to be confident. This is a little bit of a tip. It's a fresh tip that I haven't given you before. So your speaking is recorded. Uh, be sure to speak loudly and clearly so that if the examiner is not sure whether to give you a band uh, 6.5 or 7 and listens again to the recording, they hear a loud and confident voice which will prompt them more towards the higher score, okay? So again, this is still speaking practice even when I'm giving you tips like this. Uh, repeat, there's a lot of good vocabulary here. So your speaking is recorded. Be sure to speak loudly and clearly so that if the examiner is not sure whether to give you a band 6.5 or 7 and listens again to the recording, they hear a loud and confident voice which will prompt them more towards the higher score. Just think about it yourself. If you're listening to somebody speaking on a recorder and you hear you're gonna be like well okay yeah okay that was a 6.5 but if you hear them say well here's my passport i use for registration please take a look you'll be like all right yeah he's pretty clear pretty confident i'll give him that seven okay so keep that in mind okay keep that in mind all right it's an important tip and especially if you need a remark, sometimes that happens where students get high marks on all the other sections except the speaking and they ask for a remark and then another examiner listens to the recording. Then it's especially important that it's loud and clear. Okay, so when they ask you uh, the passport question, then they'll ask you a couple of general questions to get to know you better and they'll ask you a question uh, like, uh, where do you live? Yeah, let's get to know each other a little bit. Uh, where do you live? Okay. Boomi Chutbar says, I reside in a two-bedroom apartment 
on the second floor of a five-story building with my parents and younger brother in the heart of Ahmedabad, uh, located in the western part of India. Beautiful answer, Bumi. Really nice paraphrasing. Very nice connection and fluency. Uh, good detail, good use of quants. If you want to see a band nine level response, Boomi just nailed it. Okay. Of live, Boomi is using reside. Very accurate when we're talking about living space. Okay. Um, two bedroom apartment on the second floor. It's a nice description of the physical location of where Boomi lives. And then he quickly puts in, uh, or she, Boomi, I'm not sure. I think you're a he, but correct me if I'm wrong, uh, puts in um, that uh, they're living with the parents and younger brother in the heart of Ahmedabad. So the city, also a little bit of idiomatic language with heart of in the western part of India. Very, very accurate. Very nice response, Boomi. That's exactly what students need to do for this question, okay, to get those high band scores. All right. Tanwisi Nandi says, I live in a three-bedroom apartment with my parents and younger brother in the capital of Singapore. Very good. Name the capital. Uh, Rajveer Singh says, I live in a one-bedroom apartment on the first floor of a multi-story building in Gurgaon, uh, which is an IT hub in the northern part of India. Very nice. Nice, quick description, Rajveer. Beautiful. Bayan Koinsbeck. Yazi says, I've been living in Almaty, which is, uh, which is found in the south of Kazakhstan since 95. Almaty is quite a bustling and vibrant city. That's very good, Bayan. I like it. So you're answering the actual city. Uh, for this question, it's good to also include the um, building or um, the shelter where you live, the house, the home, uh, the apartment, flat. Okay, so include that. It's a smart idea. All right. Uh, Dr. Krishna, our member, says, I live in the same city where this exam is held, um, Surat, also known as the Diamond City, which is blessed to have both the river Tapti and a beach. I live in a bungalow with my parents in an area called Adajan. Uh, very good, Dr. Krishna. Uh, little correction, Dr. Krishna, at the beginning. I live right here in this city where this exam is held. Uh, not in the same city. It's a bit awkward for that content. Um, we would say I live right here where this exam is being held or right here where we're doing this exam, okay? So it'd be like this, Dr. Krishna. I live right here where we are currently doing this exam in Budapest, which of course is the capital city of Hungary. And I live just a stone's throw away from the Danube uh, River in a two-bedroom apartment with my lovely wife and daughter. All right. Uh, so there's my answer. A little bit of feedback there for you, Dr. Krishna, as well. It was a nice attempt uh, to express that. Again, students in the beginning for these first three, four questions, be really certain that you're using language which you are sure is correct, okay? It's very important that you seem for the examiner like you have a very, very accurate command of English. Even native speakers make mistakes often in speech, but in the beginning, when you're being tested, you want to really appear flawless, perfect, okay? So repeat after me. Here we go. Uh, where do you live? I live right here where we are currently doing this exam in Budapest, which is, of course, the capital city of Hungary. And I live just a stone's throw away from the Danube River in a two-bedroom apartment with my lovely wife and daughter. Okay, and I'm sure a couple of you are thinking stone's throw, but I guess you can figure that out. Uh, it means to be very close. A stone's throw means that you can throw the stone that distance. So as you can guess, it's quite close, okay? So that's idiomatic language. Of 
close or quite close. Okay. Uh, when you use idiomatic language, a lot of students ask me, like, should I use idioms in the speaking? Yeah, but use simple idioms, okay? Please don't use really long idioms that are complex and are tricky to use. So use two or three word idioms, okay? That's my tip here. All right. Uh, in the speaking, uh, use two, uh, three word idiomatic language. So when you're doing your studies, kind of review and learn these two, three word uh, idiomatic uh, expressions like um, stones throw or um, in the heart of. Okay, the heart of would be the idiom here. Um, so learn these kind of simpler idioms that are quick and easy to use when you practice them. Uh, don't use long idiomatic uh, phrases as these are tricky and can hurt your band score when used incorrectly, which is often when I hear students trying. Okay, so you have to be very careful with those. Practice those, learn those for your future use of the English language, of course, but the IELTS speaking is not the place for long idiomatic expressions, okay? So, all right, next question, students, here we go. What do you like about your home? What do you like about your home? Uh, give me a nice full sentence. Thank you, Hie. Nyu Hei Hong. Uh, Rimshaw says, as I said earlier, I live in a house which is on the outskirts of the city. I adore the picturesque uh, landscape that I can see outside of my windows. And on the inside, it's a cozy studio sufficient for my family. Very good, Rimshaw. I made a couple of corrections there. Note those. It's at 22 minutes if you want to check back what I corrected and paraphrased, okay? You're using a good word there, picturesque. Picturesque is usually an adjective. So picturesque what? Picturesque landscape, picturesque view, uh, picturesque mountains, okay? So like a picture picturesque. Uh, all right, Shaikh Fazil says, hmm, my home is a stunning um, house, consists of three floors. Uh, I like the backyard the most with lots of greenery, beautiful plants and flowers, um, where I sit and chit chat with my friends for several hours. Okay, Shaikh, I made a few corrections there, careful. Uh, otherwise, there's a few mistakes in there. It's a bit confusing. Okay. Uh, Sarav Deep says, as I mentioned, um, my location, my home is uh, near the mountain range, not belt mountains, near the mountain range. I live in a peaceful atmosphere as my home uh, is surrounded by these hills. Moreover, the view from uh, the windows is alluring. Okay, Sarav Deep, not bad. Again, a few very important corrections there. Pay attention. Students, don't get too fancy with vocabulary if you're not sure that you're using it correctly. Of course, in this class, yeah, try out your new words. That's why I'm here, so I can give you feedback and show you if you're using them correctly or not. But in the real IELTS, be very careful not to get too fancy because using complex vocabulary incorrectly will hurt your score more than using simpler vocabulary correctly. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, Carolina Asanio says, what I like most about my apartment is that it's spacious. It has big windows and lofty ceilings, which make it very bright, so I can work from home very comfortably these days, especially during this lockdown. Carolina, I hope you caught all that. Great to see you in class, Carolina. I love your ambition and you're pushing forward and continuing to improve your English. You're fantastic, Carolina. Keep it up. You're a beautiful person. Keep going, okay? All right. Um, 
I Alves says, my favorite part of my house is my balcony. I spend a lot of time there with my mom. We like to observe the sunset and the city. Um, we like to watch the sunset. It's more natural. There's a very kind of common way to say that, Alves. It's we like to watch the sunset and um, people watching in the city. We have an expression, people watching. Okay. Um, I love that my, balc my home has a large balcony on the fourth floor, which overlooks a very uh, busy street. So I can sit out there in the morning with a cup of coffee and people watch. Also, it's west facing, so my wife and I sit out there in the evenings and watch the sunset. All right, so just kind of feeding off of that, um, and a kind of an interesting uh, concept here, people watch, so say people watching, uh, it's a hobby some people have, uh, sitting in a, in a coffee shop or on a balcony uh, or a patio and watching people as they move around the city, thinking about what it must be like to be that person, that's called people watching. Uh, here we go, repeat after me, what do you like about your home? I love that my home has a large balcony on the fourth floor, which overlooks a very busy street. So I can sit out there in the morning with a cup of coffee and people watch. Also, it's west facing. So my wife and I sit out there in the evenings and watch the sunset. It's very romantic. Okay, great. So uh, now that uh, you're showing uh, some confidence and uh, you're moving along, you're showing fluency, the examiner's feeling good about this session. You're going to get a nice high band score. And now the examiner says, uh, let's talk about your traveling. So your travels, okay? All right. Uh, yeah, somebody was asking, will this class be available later? Yeah, these classes are recorded and available in the live class sessions on our channel later. So yeah, you can check these out. And of course, you can always find our HD video library on our websites, aehelp.com and gialtshelp.com. So all of our materials are there as well. Okay, so let's talk about traveling. Now, in this class, we are talking about fluency. And fluency is kind of an interesting uh, concept. Uh, it's quite actually tricky to define. Um, what is fluency? So I'd like to hear from you students, in your opinion, uh, what does it mean fluency in speaking? What do you think that is? So I think a lot of people hear this word, they know they're being um, evaluated on fluency, but what actually is fluency? So what, what do you think the examiner is listening for? Okay, so what does that mean? What is fluency? Like, what is a better way to ask or quantify is what is band nine fluency? What does that actually mean? So Roshni says it's intonation and pronunciation, but Roshni, that's not it because pronunciation is actually a completely separate score. Intonation is kind of part of it, sure. So intonation, pronunciation, no. Pronunciation is different. Um, I, I think I know what you mean by pronunciation, but... It's not really a part of fluency, okay? So Carolina says, being able to think in English and express ideas clearly. Now, notice, students, something interesting here. There are a lot of different answers coming in for this question of what is fluency, okay? So Sammy says, talking continuously. Uh, Carolina said, thinking and expressing oneself in English. Okay. 
Sure. Let's see what else is uh, coming up from students here. Um, there was an interesting one there, which was uh, by uh, Chaabi. Chaabi says, speaking comfortably. In English, that's actually a very good answer, Chaabi. It's a very good answer. It's a very uh, accurate way to see this. Uh, Beck John says, speaking fast. What is speaking fast? Like 10 words per 10 seconds, 20 words per 10 seconds. So there we get into another interesting question. Kyber says, speaking like a native. Okay. All right, best answer. I think the best answer, <laughs> and I, this is kind of, I, I hate to say this, but the best answer here is speaking comfortably in English. Okay. Now that's very subjective. Some of you are going, what, what are you talking about, Adrian? Why would that be the best answer? Speaking comfortably in English. Well, I'll explain it and I'll explain what that means. Okay. Um, but let me get into it here a little bit. So uh, speaking comfortably is connected to intonation. It's connected to talking continuously. It's very strongly, Carolina, connected to thinking and expressing oneself in English. Um, and it's kind of connected to speaking fast, okay? Speaking fast and speaking like a native, those are not necessarily accurate because some native speakers that you will meet will speak very slowly and methodically, like I'm doing right now. They will choose their words, take their time expressing their thoughts, and give you clear, calm, and fairly slow types of answers, okay? Some native speakers are really hyper and going to talk to you like this, where they can't just keep thinking without talking, and they're going to keep talking until they run out of ideas, and some of it will make sense, some of it won't make sense, and it'll be really fluent, but at the end of the day, maybe they're answering your question, maybe they're not. Okay. So some people will talk like that. And then of course there will be kind of an average that you'll feel as well. So there's quite a range of uh, speed of speaking among native speakers. Just think about it in your own language. You probably have met people in your own language that speak quite fast and some people that speak slower and many people that speak at a moderate rate. Okay. So that's kind of, that's, that's variable. Okay. So speaking like a native, speaking fast is variable. Speaking comfortably in English, it means the most important here is the student does not need to think about grammar, vocabulary, and translating ideas in order to give a complete answer explanation and oftentimes an example okay so that's really what it means to speak fluently okay uh, and the examiners know that so if you've ever met a person who is a non-native speaker in your language you can tell when they're trying to think of the right word you can tell when they're translating their ideas or when they're uh, stopping because they're fixing the grammar so that it makes more sense in your language. So you can tell that, okay? That's when you're losing your marks in fluency in the IELTS exam. So what the IELTS examiner is looking for is a person that can respond. Now within that, there's a couple of important tips, okay? So tips to get good fluency scores. Okay. You do not need to answer immediately after you hear the question. You do not uh, need to speak quickly right away. Okay. So what I mean by that is that it's a good strategy, okay? So instead, uh, what you can do is take a second 
after you hear the question to collect your thoughts and give a good answer. Okay? This is not a race. It's only two of you in the room. Okay? Um, also, start speaking slowly and build up momentum as you express your ideas. Okay, so uh, momentum is the rate of movement. And uh, for students who study physics, uh, momentum is the built up energy that continues in the movement. Okay, so a large object like a train or a truck, when it gets moving, it has a lot of momentum. It's very hard for it to stop. So what you want to do is you want to start slowly in your answers build momentum and you want to think about your answer before you begin speaking you're going to end up with a much better fluency score what happens uh, for many students and we see this when we're doing our uh, speaking exams is they start very quickly but then they stop suddenly because they don't have a clear idea and that breaks their fluency okay so don't do that think before you speak it's a very ancient wise advice think before you speak so practice that now students let's go through a few more questions and keep these tips in mind okay hope everybody is clear on these let's uh, move along okay let's move along all right okay here we go students so let's get into it How often do you travel away from your city? Okay, first question. How often do you travel away from your city? So you take a second, you think about it, and you go, mm, I'd say about once every two months, I travel outside of Budapest, either for work or for vacation. Uh, just last month, I took my daughter and my wife uh, down to Lake Balaton uh, to have a nice stroll and enjoy uh, a beautiful dinner on the beach okay so start slow build momentum all right i see lots of answers coming up that's fantastic um hina says to be honest it's not quite often because i work uh full time apart from my job i do study as well so it seems hard for me to get a chance to travel hina you haven't answered the question yet how often Okay, so if it's not quite often, is it once every six months, once a year? Okay, so you have to be answering, you have to answer the question, you have to be more accurate. Uh, Beckjohn says, as I'm studying at the university, which is situated in another city, I frequently travel away from my hometown, I'd say at least eight to nine times per year. Okay, all right, I get it, Beckjohn. Uh, so you travel actually home to visit your friends and family, right? You want to make that clear, Beck John, because I had to stop and think about that for a second, all right? Uh, Marios says, uh, Marios GR says, traveling is my hobby, therefore I go out of my city quite often. Two months ago, me and my girlfriend visited Santorini, an island in Greece, and we had a great time enjoying the beautiful sunset. Marios, I love Santorini. I've been there. I've been to Eos as well. Both Eos and Santorini are amazing places. Super cool. I can picture exactly what you're talking about. That's why you want to give these kinds of smooth flowing examples because definitely a couple of them, you'll hit a chord with your examiner and they'll be able to picture it like I just did. Uh, Musafir Hun Yarun says, I like to travel every month because it's a break from my monotonous routines. I feel refreshed when I go once a month out of my city. Uh, just last um, uh, May, even with the lockdown, I hopped in my car and just took a solo trip down to the beach at, okay? So finish the idea, Musafir, but you're on the right track, okay? So uh, there we go. All right. Rangana says, 
As a customer care agent, I get to travel very frequently out of my hometown. I would say two to three times per month. Uh, just a week yesterday, me and my team went to, and then Rangana continues. Very nice, Rangana. Really nice or, uh, original answer and explanation. So I uh, sometimes take trips away from Budapest. Okay, and this is why it's good in the beginning to answer accurately to questions, right? Uh, so there was that question about uh, where do you live? And I said, I live in uh, Budapest right here where the exam is, which is the uh, capital of Hungary. And now I can refer to that. And this is why you want to be specific so you can make connections and refer to your other answers. I sometimes take trips away from Budapest. Uh, I would say at least once each month. Uh, last month in May, I took a road trip with my family to Lake Balaton for some hiking and a restaurant experience. Okay, sure. So again, answer, explain, example, repeat after me. How often do you travel away from your city? I sometimes take trips away from Budapest. I would say at least once each month. Last month in May, I took a road trip with my family to Lake Bolaton for some hiking and a restaurant experience. Mm-hmm. Okay, next question. Keep going, students. You're doing a fantastic job. Uh, again, don't have to start answering right away. It's okay to think for a minute. Uh, the examiner will know, okay, so this is another little quick tip here in brackets. Uh, the examiners know when candidates are thinking about ideas for their answers uh, versus uh, language and grammar. Okay, so the examiners know that. Just like you would in your own language when you're talking to someone, you can pick that up. So you can be like, oh yeah, they're thinking about what to say versus, oh yeah, they're thinking about how to say it. Okay, so the examiners know that. All right, so keep this in mind. Okay, here we go, next question. Uh, where do you like to go on vacation? Give me a nice full sentence for this one. Where do you like to go on vacation? All right, Charlie Sen says, well, I would like to visit Manali, which is one of the beautiful towns in India, located uh, at the footsteps of the Himalayas. I'm always fond of the mountains, aside from their natural beauty, uh, their magnificent height amazes me. All right, very good, Charlie. Charlie, important correction, and listen to this one, students, because many students make the same mistake. Charlie is a high, quite a high-level English user, and many even high-level uh, non-native speakers make this mistake. It's always one of many. So one of many, one of plural, okay? So Charlie, well, I would like to visit Manali, which is one of the beautiful towns... Uh, Okay, because it's one of the many beautiful towns in India. Okay, that's an important one, students. That's uh, that when students get that correct, that shows the examiner, oh, okay, there's someone who doesn't make that mistake. So it's one of many, okay? it's I know it's confusing because it's one, so students think, oh, it's one, so it's singular, but no, it's one of many, okay? So it's always plural, all right? Okay. Uh, Carolina Asano says, I would like to go on vacation to Colombia, which is my home country where I grew up. I love growing, going there to see my family and friends. Last December, I was there, and we had a ton of fun on the beach, reconnecting and sharing stories. Very good, Carolina. Nice answer. Pooja, nice to see you in class. Pooja says, 
can find Pooja. Pooja says, undoubtedly the beach. It's amazing to have a pina colada drink on the coast, enjoying the sea delicacies with my friends. In fact, I love playing beach ball while getting a light tan. Nice vocabulary, Pooja. Well done. Good answer. Okay, uh, be specific, Pooja. Which beach? What, what is your favorite beach? Okay. Mayank Vermani says, well, I would really go to different places for sightseeing or maybe just checking historical cities in my country. Just this past winter, I went to Agra with my friends to experience the beauty of uh, the Taj Mahal. Uh, Mayank, not bad, but students, keep in mind that you want to be specific. Don't generalize questions. Okay, so don't say I want to go to different places and historic places and the mountains and the beach. Uh, no, no, no. Be specific. Okay, so uh, where do you like to go on vacation? Uh, try to be fairly specific. So I usually like to go to the beach uh, for vacation because. Okay, so don't. I mean, you could say a couple places for a question like this, but definitely don't go overboard and start explaining that you basically will go anywhere on vacation. Okay, so. Musa Hoon says, I would like to go to some beaches and try some adventure sports because it helps me feel active and refreshed trying new activities. And I have several of these on my bucket list, like parasailing, right, where they pull you behind the boat. Okay, and jet skiing, all right, scuba diving. Musa Fir, throw those in. Let me give you some vocabulary uh, points, okay? Bucket list is a nice expression. It's a list of activities that you want to do before you kick the bucket. Kick the bucket means we die. Um, so before kicking the bucket, before dying, I have a bucket list. It means a list of activities that I want to do. Uh, Musafir, don't use the word things, okay? Instead of things, use activities, events, better noun, okay? Better noun, all right? So um, where do you like to is real condition, okay? It's not unreal, so it's not if I had a chance. So I like to go to nature for my travels, uh, specifically to the beach or the forest. I'm a very active person. So I enjoy uh, beach sports like surfing and kayaking or hiking and photography in nature. As I just mentioned in regards to my trip to Lake Balaton. Okay, Lake Balaton is the largest freshwater lake in Europe located in Budapest, and it's beautiful. If anybody wants to have a great vacation in a, uh, on a large lake uh, shore, uh, Lake Balaton in Hungary is quite an amazing place to visit. Okay, so repeat after me. Uh, where do you like to go on vacation? I like to go to nature for my travels, specifically to the beach or the forest. I'm a very active person, so I enjoy beach sports like surfing and kayaking or hiking and photography in nature, as I just mentioned, in regards to my trip to Lake Balaton. Okay. All right. Uh, next question, students. Next question. Here we go. When is the best time to travel for you? Okay. For you is a little bit better than to you. Uh, so when is the best time to travel for you and why? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Mbisser says, in my opinion, uh, summer time is the best uh, for travel, not only because it's my favorite time of the year, but because most of my friends are free from work during this time, so we can go on trips together. Very nice, Bisser. Where did you go last summer? Where do you plan to go this summer? Give me that little extra bit, and I'll give you a little extra bit of marks for your band score. Um, Kyber says, well, I think that for me, September is the best month 
in order to travel because both uh, the autumn, which is my favorite season, and the start of college gives me an official vacation for three months. Okay, Kyber, good. Don't switch to us. Students, stay away from the us and the we. Uh, try to stay with I, me, my for this, okay? Nazir, our new premium member, uh, says, I prefer to travel in summer as the weather is not that hot. I can swim. I can get lots of vitamin D in the sun. Uh, just last summer, I visited a couple of beaches in the south part of Turkey, and I have some new and unforgettable memories from those. Okay, Nazir, very good. Uh, name of the beach, maybe? I'd love to find out the name of some great beaches in Turkey. It's not that far from Hungary. And I'm thinking about visiting there once uh, the whole COVID crisis settles. Um, all right, Nazir, very nice. Okay, good. So answer, explain, example, connection. All right, that's what we're working on. Answer, explain, example, connection. All right. Hadise says, uh, in my opinion, whether the opportunity arises, just pack my bags and go. According to me, the springtime and the summertime are the best. This is when the temperatures are suitable and I can travel to many places. Okay. Hadith, again, keep it to yourself. My, not you. Don't start talking about the examiner. Even though I know it's kind of natural, uh, it's awkward communication. So I, me, my students in the IELTS exam, no you, no us, no we, no our, just I, me, my, I, me, my. Focus on that. Okay. All right. When is the best time to travel for you? Why? I enjoy traveling in late spring and early summer because the weather is nice and the air is fresh. There are many activities that I can enjoy with my family, like surfing and hiking. All right. So uh, repeat after me. When is the best time to travel for you and why? I enjoy traveling in late spring and early summer because the weather is nice and the air is fresh. There are many activities uh, to do that I can enjoy with my family, like surfing and hiking. All right, students, a couple more questions. They get a little bit more challenging. What is your favorite way to travel? Why? Have you ever traveled to another country? Why? And if you could visit any place on earth, where would you go and why? I will leave these last three questions today for you to do at home record as an mp3 on your phone and you can send your mp3 recording to my email adrian at aehelp.com you can see these questions again in the video on the channel later and if you send me that recording i'll send you back uh, a, um, a, a score estimate of roughly what you would get for your speaking on the IELTS exam, uh, our estimates are very accurate. Many students have said that they got exactly what we estimated or just a half band off. So you can get an accurate estimate. Just try those and to learn lots, lots more, to see many more of our videos, get our practice exams, get lots of help with speaking, uh, visit us at aehelp.com and gielshelp.com. On our website, um, you can find uh, speaking um, partners, oh, let's see, can we, I uh, should be able to, here, let me try that one more time. I do have internet, so let me try to, let's see, uh, something with the internet. Anyway, on the websites, um, you can find uh, speaking partners, okay? So if you go on the website, you log in, and you click the uh, student partner speaking, you can do voice and video chat with speaking partners. I'm not going to troubleshoot my internet right now, so I won't show that to you. But uh, definitely go there and practice. There are usually people waiting there for somebody to start chatting with them. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a reading class for members starting at 1330 Central European time. 
and then listening parts one and two where everybody can join the chat. So that's tomorrow, reading and listening. Until then, check out our websites. Much love to all of you from Beautiful Hungry. I'm signing out. Bye for now.